What's happening? I'm Jason Marsden. You might have seen me in Full House, Boy Meets World, Step by Step. You might have heard me in a goofy movie, Focus Focus, Spirited Away. You're watching the NRW. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that because I think that's what kind of puts you into a whole other realm. 
realm of the pop culture sphere yes. with, the, with the many amazing characters that you've brought to life with your voice. Uh, how is it going from being a screen actor to getting into voice acting and that change of pace of having to learn to convey emotions with your voice and being in a movie because you're not acting it out? Well, the first cartoon I ever did was uh, Dizzy's Adventures with Gummy Bears. Anyone remember that? Woo! Gummy Bears! Bouncing here and there and everywhere. That was my jam! <laughs> I love it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I, I was, again, it was one of the first things I did. I was 11. And um, I played the, the role of the, the boy, Cabin. Cabin, who was friends with the Gummy Bears. I was the second Cabin because the first actor had went through puberty and didn't sound like a little boy anymore. So I read for it, I looked it. Now, when I was doing these workshops, I told you about in Irvine, California. They'd always told me that when you're touring with another actor, you look them in the eyes, okay? Now, when we did Gummy Bears, it was kind of like being on a small airplane. It was just two rows of microphones, and they're all sitting down. And I was in the very front, in the second row. And, I, and every time I was supposed to add to the person behind me, I would turn talking like this. And of course, you can't hear because I'm off mic. So that was a learning curve. You're like, oh, Jason, okay, so you got to get turned on the mic. <laughs> Like I'm being a good actor, I'm making eye contact with my fellow actor. No, it's gonna be on the mic. So yeah, there's a certain like there's really no difference in voice acting and on camera acting. You're conveying all the same thing, it's just the little technical things you gotta change, like you know, get all the change out of your pocket. Don't be wearing like loud clothing. Uh, you know, if your actor's behind you, then you gotta figure out a way to perform and use your imagination. Uh, so that's, that's the kind of stuff I picked up on that too. And then learning to like turn your pages of the script so you're not, you're not uh, interrupting other, someone else's performance. Yeah. yeah. Let me tuck, let me just throw this <laughs> cord behind my back like a start. Do you have a favorite earlier role? Favorite early role? I did a show called uh, Erie, Indiana. Anyone? Yes. We have a couple yes. of years. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was a very short lived. Yes. Swedish chef back there, you see in Indiana. I'm a Swedish here in the evening, and then we are better here than dead. Yeah, yeah, man. I was 17 when I did that. It was a very, if you haven't seen I think it's on Amazon Prime. Uh, it's like Twilight Zone for kids. And uh, if anyone's seen Hocus Pocus, Omri Katz, who played Max in Hocus Pocus, starred in Indiana. Yeah. So that was the first time I worked with him. And I loved doing that show because it was like making little movies. Because most of the stuff I'd done was like sitcoms, which is a different environment. It's like a studio audience. Yeah. These were like like sets and special effects and costumes. And I was working with my actors. I always going to work with John Aston, who played the original uh, Wilma's Adams and uh, Adams Family. And uh, uh, Paul Sands is uh, great uh, film directors. And uh, Joe Dante produced the show. And I didn't know Joe Dante from what? Because we have some amazing fans here. Give it up again for Jason Morrison. 
This is a Q and A. I shouldn't be driving. You guys should be talking. You guys okay. ask a question. Let's have some fans come up right over here. We have a mic at the far left over here. If you have a question, uh, we can start lining up, and you're welcome to come and uh, ask a question of Jason. What's it like voicing Max in a goofy movie? It's a yuck and awesome. <laughs>
Yeah, you're, you can. You're good. Okay, I have a loud voice, so I'm just gonna do that. Voice. Yes. I'm a teacher, so um, <laughs> I want. I, I got so deep. Um, sorry, like so excited. How is it to voice and teach from static shock? Because as a kid from Brooklyn, like that had some real issues. Yes. I saw people of color. I saw representation. I saw like comic book stories that spoke to me, and Richie was like one of my baby crushes. <laughs> <laughs> so like how cool was it to be part of that and do like the cameos with like Batman and like Teen Titans like with the dope like It was so dope. dope. First off, like, it was refreshing to be part of a show that featured an African American yeah, hero. Like, and I was the token white guy on <laughs> that show. And it was it was awesome. First off, like behind the scenes stuff, like I worked with Phil Amar a few times. Was, yeah, the girl. Girl. Thank you. What's your name? Allie. Thank you, Allie. Yeah, man, I, uh, he's a Phil Amar fan in here. Samurai Jack is one of my favorite. Shout out to Phil. Um, I'm such a big fan of his, even from like Pulp Fiction and Mad TV and all that stuff. And we were together on a show on the weekenders, and uh, so we got to play best friends again for a static shot. And uh, it was really well produced, the stories were great, and dealt with like real, real stuff that was happening in the world. And, uh, uh, and then they did like fun, and do stuff like crossovers with Batman yeah. and the Joker, Mark Hamill, sitting like as close to me as you are. Yeah. And like, it's so weird. It's like, Mark Hamill's just a regular, he's just a dude, he's a regular dude, he's a dad, he's a big comic book nerd. He, he knows, like, like, he memorizes, like, theme songs from, like, 50s TV shows. And, man, but when he's sitting next to me, I'm like, it's <laughs> We did, a, we did an episode of like all these like, uh, yeah, and I'm not a sports fan, but like Shaquille O'Neal and all that, like, like big uh, uh, basketball stars, guest stars, heroes, superheroes, they had superhero powers, it was weird, but it was a, it was a good time. I'm very proud of working on that show. Dennis Cowan created a uh, uh, status show. Why not, man? Dennis, actually, we have Dennis, but come on, we can reboot that. Sure. They told me, thank you, uh, the late, great, Dwayne McDuffie, uh, uh, comic artist and animation writer, he, uh, he worked on that a lot. And he, he told me, after the fact, I don't know what you all think, I thought, I don't know, I personally thought this would be more ridiculous. He said they were going to do a uh, Gear Riches spin off. I'm like, I don't know, no one wants to see that. That would have been weird. Really? Uh, much respect to Dwayne. Dwayne actually helped give me the words when I started my career. Get out of here. Dwayne, yeah, it's one of Dennis' good friends. Man, but, uh, too soon. Yes. Um, right there. Hi. Yes. What is your process for coming up with the different voices for the characters? Do you get guidance from the creators, or is it open to your interpretation? What is my process for coming up with voices for a character? Did you have a process that you do? No. No. You may. You probably do. You don't realize it. Yeah. Right? It, uh, yeah. You know. If I'm lucky, I'll get a picture of the character. Yeah. That really helps. Yeah. Um, and a description. Um, maybe a storyline. And from there, I just kind of instinctually go in my head and, like, oh, the picture of, like, Max. And be like, oh, you know, he's, he's, he's 14, yeah. a little angsty, maybe 13, 14. So he's probably going to puberty. He's going to start back a little bit, maybe. Yeah. yeah, Caroline. He's a big enemy. He's a big Caroline. He's a shame of his dad. He's a little bit angsty. So I just messed around with that, and I had guidance from Kevin Lima, the director of the, the movie. You know, it's all a collaborative thing. And sometimes you just like, you know, you just throw you in there, and you, you try a couple things. Um, I audition. I usually audition at home on my laptop, and, uh, and I'll just try two or three things, send them away, and hope that they like it. Yeah. You bet. Yay! Awesome. Before I throw it to another one, I have a sidebar conversation uh, question. Yes. Um, as a voice actor occasionally. Yes. Um, do you prefer, uh, and for the other upcoming voice actors, because I know there's people out here that want to know about getting into the business, uh, studio in booth, or now, because of the, the technology, you can record your own, make your own sound booth. Do you prefer going to the studio, or do you like recording, uh, just being in your own house? I, I much prefer being in a booth with the uh, other actors. So you can interact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's weird. It depends on the, the company. Like, Disney mostly will record individually. They, they cast a lot of celebrities. It depends on the schedule. You know? yeah. um, 
So oftentimes when I'm doing a Disney project, I'm kind of by myself. Um, when I did a Goofy movie, it was me and Bill a lot. Uh, Warner Brothers, when we have a time we did Static Shock or Young Justice or Lunatics, Batman, all that stuff is always, always a full cast. And I love it. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you get a lot more performative than you can interact. Yeah. You know. Alright, question over here. Yes, hat. What's happening? You got a figment shirt over here. Yay! Great finder, I'm just great. You can just speak out. Going back to your earlier work, I was wondering if you had any fun anecdotes from Boy Meets World, and as a related note, it seemed like you and Will Friedle were their best friends around the same agents because you seemed to keep on showing up in things together over that time for the Trojan War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, special guest appearances on Step by Step, and I was hoping you could comment on that. Ty. Absolutely. What's your name? Ty. Ty. Thank you, Ty. Ty asked about my uh, being working on Boy Meets World and my friendship with Will Friedle. Do we have any Boy Meets World fans here? Yeah? The Eric Matthew fans? So here's a fun story. So, yeah, Will, 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 Will was from Connecticut, I'm from Rhode Island. We met uh, at an audition for a show called Almost Home, which was a, sort of like a reboot of a show called The Tortlesons. Um, when you audition for a TV show, you, you go in, you do the callback, you do another callback, and maybe another one. And if they really like you, they take you to the network. And that, oh man, it's like makes, you, makes my palms sweat just thinking about it. So you go in, and that's like a final, it's like a final thing. It's usually between like you and a few other people, and you go in the room for the network, and it's the most sterile, like most unfeeling, you know, experience. But you go in, you do your best, and then you'll find out usually that day if you got the job. So uh, going in to network for almost time, it's me, Will Friedle, Sh uh, Shiloh Strong, writer's older brother. We all go in, I nailed that thing, sent Will home in defeat. <laughs> then, Boy Meets World comes along. All, almost home is done. They brought me in for that. I auditioned the man, bam, let's go. But I go to network. It's me, Will Friedle, Shiloh Strong. Now, I couldn't send Will home and defeat again. So I just politely bowed out of that one. That's not true. He earned it fair and square. He earned it fair and square. So that night, I was really bummed because I lost a job. And I... My friends took me to Universal Studios, just to let off some steam. And because uh, Will's from Connecticut, they flew him in, flew him and his dad in for the audition. They put him up at the Universal Hilton. As I'm walking up the, the, the hill to the entrance of Universal Studios, he's walking back down towards me. And I see him, and we make eye contact, and we look at each other, and I look at my friends, and I'm like, hey, this is the prick that stole my job. <laughs> and we became best friends ever since. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got me to voice acting, Max. Well, I, I was. How old are you? Seven. I was a little bit older than you, and I had got an agent, and my agent saw saw. So I was like, I was cute, and saw something in me, and immediately started sending me out on everything: TV shows, movies, cartoons. Cartoons is something I had an aptitude for, you know. Thank you, Max. You have a question? Yeah, yes. let me just say, yeah, yeah, I've been a long time fan of your work. Like a, Thank you. Like Static, I remember you and Move Spirit in LA. Yes. One of, my favorite, yeah. one, of my favorite, one of my favorite characters you've done was Gary from Extreme Ghostbusters. Hey, yeah. that's right, who are you going to call? Yeah. What was your experience like voicing that character? Uh, has like, anyone ever heard of the Extreme Ghostbusters cartoon that came out in the 90s? Yeah, I got some hands, I got some hands. So, yeah, it was a trip and a half, because number one, I'm a Ghostbusters fan, and I watched the real Ghostbusters that came on. You can only watch it every Saturday morning. That's the only time we could watch cartoons, Max. That's it. We didn't have Boomerang or Cartoon Network or any of that, or Netflix. We had to wait once a week yes. to watch a lot of so our shows. <laughs> and I, I was obsessed with that show because it was dark and the animation was really cool and I loved the, the, the voice actors and so when I heard out found out about that the Extreme Ghostbusters I was extremely elated and I played a 
Yeah, in my opinion, one of the coolest characters is Garrett Miller. He was a wheelchair bound Ghostbuster. He was he was arrogant and tough, and he didn't let having you know, a handicap stop him from kicking Ghost butt. You know? <laughs> so, uh, and as for his, and, and here's the fun thing: it's like you know, you become an actor or a voice actor, you work on stuff, you never know what's going to touch the hearts of people, what's going to gain you in popularity, and I'm, I'm because of you guys, because of you guys, because of uh, 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 Fairfax Comic Con, I'm invited here like I'm, a, like I'm a rock star, you know? And I'm being flown to, uh, yeah, Max, you did as you are. Right? And because of Ghostbusters, I'm going to Ectocon in Glasgow, Scotland next year. Wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? What are you doing all the way in Scotland? Pardon? What are you doing all the way in Scotland, Max? I'm going to be, well, I'm going to be Garrett there. I don't know if Max is being way over there. <laughs> Scotland. You got a question over here. There you go. Yep. Yes. I feel like it's the price is right. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite spirit that is cute. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, so, lovely lady with the hat actually had my first original question. So, um, my second question is, it's, I know you're from kind of weird stuff. I know you're the I Esther or uh, I yes. know you're the top Sweeney. Yes, yes. So, my question is, I've done acting before, but my tricky part is always, and especially like in a show like Cora, really being able to like picture yourself and imagine yourself in that world, in those crazy fantasy worlds where teenage robots exist, and spirits are real. Like, what would your tips be for like, putting yourself in that? It's just, what's your name? Courtney. Courtney. First off, I don't know if you have a personality to be an actor. You just seem very reserved in that. I don't know. You seem like you have a tremendous imagination. Right? I guess. Yes? <laughs> of course you do. We all do. We all do. It's just, it's, 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 it's thinking outside yourself. It's, it's not giving any, any Fs about what you think, what other people think about you. It's about willing to make, uh, to fail with dignity, to be able to try stuff. And that's, uh, you know, you're in this, uh, like Cora, for example, you, know, you have a script, you have directors, they tell you what's going on, and I do my best to put myself in the shoes of, of Spirit I, I and and promote all that, you know? It's uh, it's a collaborative thing, but it's about, you know, taking that leap from the lion's head. <laughs> Thank you. You so bet. Much. Thank you. Got another question over here? Any more questions? I, well, I got one real quick. I want to hear what you got to I'm a big G.I. Joe fan. Yes. Um, I also cosplay as Tunnel Rat with the Finest. Y'all know about G.I. Joe, the big cosplay organization for yes. the Finest. I can Tunnel Rat. Nice. Um, but uh, you did uh, G.I. Joe Renegades. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Were you a G.I. Joe fan from the Real American League, the original? Yes, Asian I cartoon? was. Yes, so I was a Transformers fan. Yeah. From I had all the toys. And I was a G.I. Joe fan. I had all the action figures. I loved watching it. I loved it. I couldn't wait for the movie that, was, that came out in Burgess Meredith. Yes. And, uh, and uh, uh, Serpentor. Yes. Oh my gosh. Cobra! La 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 Woo! Oh my gosh. Uh, so, how was it being, from being a fan to now being renegades? It was outstanding. It was yeah. outstanding. And, uh, I got to work with Michael Bell, who was the original voice of Duke. Yeah. He played my dad in one episode. I've, worked, I've known Michael forever. I, mean, I, did a, I did a show called The Monsters Today. Michael went guest star on the show, and I knew who he was. I knew he was a voice actor. I recognized his voice, and he had done like Smurfs and Snorks and Super and uh, GI Joe and Transformers. So I would love him all the time. I was like 13, and he brought in to me uh, a script of the Snorks. He's like, "Here's something you got to work on." There was four characters in this episode. He's like, "He's like, I voiced all four of these characters." So like, work on like giving these guys. He gave me like my first lesson. Wow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, GI Joe Renegade was great. Uh, I wish we had could have done more, uh, but I, I heard that we were doomed before we even hit the air. Yeah, yeah. but um, uh, it was great. My, my buddy Matt King he was telling around. Was, uh, everyone did a great job. Awesome. I loved it. Love you. Love Thanks, man. Thank you. Great time. Thanks. Um, as a voice actor, you have a lot of roles. I'm sure they're all your babies, but you know, as you have to give Maybe. life to them. Yes, yes. What is the most difficult voice? of all of your many roles. Um, there was one, I did a show called Lucha Lucha. <laughs> you know Lucha Lucha? So I voiced, oh, it's cool, it's like a, a mask, Mexican wrestling cartoon. It's really, it's stylized and funny. Uh, Candy Milo, um, from Rugrats, she, 
played this character called the Flea, and it was, I mean, her, I mean, I couldn't hold the straight face, she's amazing. Uh, Kimberly Brooks, who's on Voltron, she was the only other characters. Um, the character I voiced was Ricochet. Ricochet was originally voiced by Carlos Azraki, so I gotta give him props for originating that voice. And he, he had, he's very busy, he was doing, I think, Rio 911. Uh, so they did a casting and then they, they cast me, I was very thankful. So when you're when you cast as a voice actor, contractually, you can be paid to do up to three voices. Uh, so I did Ricochet, and then he threw me this other character that, that Carlos did, the, uh, the, uh, the referee, big burly referee who handles all the, the matches. And he's big and he talks like this all the time. Lucha run! Yes, one, two, three! Ah! Yeah, after about 20 minutes of that, I was done, shredded. I like, like, naturally cannot do that. So that had to be, um, you know, a little few and far between. All right. And so we'll go to the other side of the spectrum. What was the easiest, or what is the one closest, I guess, to your voice? Or do you like that you know, oh, don't yeah. have to do so much inflection? Yeah, but that, well, like, Garrett is one, because that's very much me. I mean, like, I'll admit, I have an ego. I had, there was a, in my 20s, I was an arrogant, you know, person. I'm not a sh- Shame that. Uh, uh, there's a character you, know, you watch uh, Transformers Rescue Bots? Yes? You know the voice of Kane? Kane is the fireman. He had his bot is Heat Wave, voiced by Steve Blue. And Kane is also like Garrett. You know, he's a first responder, he's a fireman, he's very, in, in, very much into himself. The uh, character I was afraid of, it just came easy for me. You know? but, it, but it's my own voice, my own personality. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right, more questions out here? There we go, right there. Yes, Haku. <laughs> I call myself Big White Dragon Flannel at Expo Center. Hello again, Jason. Hello again, James. James. So, one of my, one of my favorite sitcoms growing up was Schoolhouse and Step by Step. Yes. What was it like being on the set of such iconic American TV shows in the 90s? Thank you, James. What was it like being on Full House and Step by Step? Take that. Everybody ever watch Full House and Step by Step? Woo! Start with the Full House because uh, so I was I was a fan too before I knew Candace like back in the day uh, and uh, they you know they've already been on like five or six seasons they welcomed me there like I was already part of the team Bob Saget every time they would go out for dinner he would include me I had no idea that he was such a blue comic until I worked <laughs> with him and he was like that yeah. all the time him and Dave Coulier uh, crazy. Uh, uh, I think it was when I was supposed to do like one or two episodes when they gave me like four or five or five or six, but uh, uh, it, was, it was a grand good time. Everyone was so nice, uh, had a blast. Step by step, again, similar, they were on five seasons. Um, they cast me again, and I felt like I was there since the beginning. Uh, they, uh, they took me to the, the episode where they took me to Disney World. That was, a, that was awesome. So, so did I. Let's check this out. Imagine going to Disney World like this. I was spoiled. You're not only working at Disney World, but all of us got like our own guest relations guide, our own person that would pick us up from, the, from our hotel, take us to set, and anywhere else we wanted to go. Uh, we, all our food is paid for. If we wanted to go in the parks, we didn't have to wait in line for rides. It was, it, was, it made going back as like a mother, like really, really hard. <laughs> but uh, that was like, they made these magical perks of like being on these shows. And, uh, Again, we're the great people, we learned a lot from all those situations. Uh, love it, love it, love it. Uh, you are a hero to me, my brother. Thank you, James. What's your brother's name? David. Thank you, David. Thank you, thank you. We have another question for Jason Marsden. Right yes, there. sir, come on up. Come on down. You are the next contestant to talk to Jason. Hey, hey I have a question. Yes. Did you ever watch Mr. Rogers when you were growing up? Did I watch Mr. Rogers? Are you kidding? (laughs) I absorbed Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers is like my uncle. I mean, like, like, again, you know, there wasn't a lot of programming when I was growing up. We had, you know, if you wanted, like, daily stuff, you had to wait for after school. And we had PBS. PBS, we had our electric company. We had Sesame Street and Mr. Fred Rogers, who I love. Uh, Did anyone see the trailer of Tom Hanks? Yeah. Yeah. Who cried? Yeah. 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 Uh, who saw the documentary? Yeah. Who cried? Yeah. I took a date to that, and, uh, and uh, 
call me again. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I love Mr. Rogers. I learned a lot about uh, even like filmmaking. Like I remember he went to the set of The Incredible Hulk, a TV show with Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno, to show the kids that it's just makeup. It showed him like Lou Ferrigno, who does cons all the time, showed him like putting on the makeup and the prosthetics and whatnot. He had Margaret Hamilton, who was the Wicked Witch of the West. Wizard of Oz and had her come to the house and, and just normalized everyone and made it like just you know nurture a safe environment for kids. Yeah. And I don't know if that's what you wanted to know. But it was a yes or no question. I gave you a lot more because I love some Fred Rogers. Yeah. All right, guys. We have time for one more question. We have one right here. Let's go. What's up, my man? Hello. What's your name? Noah. Noah. How you doing? Good. <laughs> what you got for me? I'll be blunt. Um, what do you think of your own singing voice? What do I think of my own singing voice? Yes. Well, I think it's outstanding in the shower, in the car, <laughs> in karaoke, for the most part. Um, uh, why do you ask? Well, I don't know. I, I remember I watched a D23 panel yes. back then. Where yes. You, where you had sung for the first time. Is well, here's the thing. So, you see the goofy movie. Uh, I did not do the singing voice for Max. So that was a boy, that was voiced by my buddy uh, Aaron Lore. Uh, uh, I I booked Max, but they wanted me to re-audition to do the singing. I did the best that I could, uh, but they, the powers of be, wanted something different, so they got Aaron to do it. Uh, when we did D23, I don't think Aaron was available, and Bill was insistent that they had me sing it, so I did it. What do you think? How did I do? Well, well. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks Jason, uh, before we go, I uh, just want to let you guys know that uh, where I'm throwing my hand out that way, the Celebrity Alley, Jason is over there. He has pictures. Uh, can you sign autographs? I got I'll that. sign pictures. I'll do selfies. I'll do this. I'll put my arm around you. We did that. I'll do voices into the phone for you. I have really cheesy candles I made. I'm really interested to see if anyone wants them. <laughs> Have you seen them? No, I yeah, gotta see it. Real, okay. You want, you want? You want to see one? They're over my table. Got, no, no, they're no, no. It's something I'm trying out. It's, it's very narcissistic and and self-serving. Uh, yeah, come on over there. We got uh, Samantha Newark from Gem the Holograms. We got Monica Real uh, and Randy. I forgot his last name from uh, uh, Havens. Randy Havens from Stranger Things. Yes. Yeah. Science season. Stranger Things. He's one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Uh, Please come by and say hello. I love if you did. All right, but before we go, real quick for those that are friends of yours that weren't able to make it. Again, I'm Patrick with New Release Wednesday. We're nerds rule the world. The NRW. Nerds rule. Um, I will have this video on our channel, youtubecom slash New Release Wednesday. If you want my card, I can give you my card. Um, but yeah, I can see we're recording it there. Um, but before we go, I would love for us to shift positions. If uh, my man see why he will take a picture of us. Let's have one big picture with. Jason, that we can throw up on the internet. Let's do it. But let's hear it one more time from Jason Boston.